review of a Geldwin Aurora fiberglass folding door system. Um, the door is a retrofit in a 1960 ranch style home in Texas that separates a living room area fully indoors from an enclosed uh, porch that is glassed and screened in. So it's somewhat of a three season room uh, separating from the living area of the house. It's it was installed to replace an eight foot wide aluminum sliding door that still had the original plate glass in it. Um, four feet of moving plate glass is pretty heavy. Aluminum is pretty soft and it had worn a groove in that channel. So the door was heavy to move. The locking mechanism had broken. Um, so I had a hard, heavy, dangerous, unsecure door that was replaced by this Geldwin door. What is a folding door? Well, the door itself is pretty cool. Um, you can see here that's eight feet long. So you have three, basically 32 inch wide uh, panels that make up the door in this configuration. It's a three panel, eight foot wide door. What you have is the door initially opens like a conventional door. You push the latch, it swings open and you've got a 32 inch wide opening. Not very exciting at this point. However, what happens when you release the bolts at the top and at the bottom, the entire door folds back and you can actually if you listen carefully, you can hear slightly the door rolling across the top, but it's very, very quiet. So when you fully open that door, you have the Home Improvement Show cliché open concept, but you have it in reality because you now have an eight foot wide fully open space from the indoor portion of your house to the outdoor area out here. So it fully opens up. There are no impediments. There's no half door. There's no sliding glass and the door is uh, wide open. The door, I like the door, but with any review on the internet, there's probably reasons that the review gets posted. Geldwin has problems with the door. It probably starts with the installation and the installation instructions. The installation instructions have errors, um, primarily associated with types of screws, ways of fastening, and procedures you should follow. I'm closing the door for a moment here. It starts with the type, the description of the screws. All the screws in the instructions are referred to as flathead screws. Unfortunately, they're not all flathead screws. So you need to choose carefully which screws do what in the installation. For example, the screws at the base that attach this very nice, very solid piece of wood in the jam to the aluminum footer down here, the sill, they are sheet metal screws that go through the wood into the aluminum frame and they torque it down. So those are a um, pan head sheet metal screw that the instructions incorrectly identify as flat head screws. Um, and then the other problem with the screws are this wood is very solid. The holes that are pre-drilled to have the sheet metal screws go through them are too small. I used a 24 volt Black & Decker cordless drill um, set on max torque, freshly charged battery, and it could not drive the screws through this jam unless the holes for the screws were slightly enlarged. Other areas where they have problems with the screws is now they do properly identify the screws in the header up here. Here's one for example. There's another here for example where that screws through the aluminum header up through here into your door jam or into your uh, your uh, header above the door. Now the door rests; it actually hangs on this channel on trucks 
um, that hold up the weight of the door. So you need a very beefy header and those screws need to be properly and uh, correctly installed. The problem is Geldwin has poor quality control on preparing these holes because they pre-drill the spacing, at least in this application they did. The holes were all very rough. They did not do any uh, chamfering, they did not do any cleaning up, any countersinking uh, of those screws at all. So the screws, again, were also too small. You could not drive the wood screw through that header fully into the, uh, or excuse me, through that aluminum track fully into the header to properly support the weight of the door. So Geldwin, and the issue there is when you do it as the installer, um, when you clean up that hole, what you have is small pieces of metal swarf or metal filings that fall down and you can see there's a channel here where the, where the wheels roll. Now, I haven't mentioned the price so far, but this door in its configuration with the issues I've described so far, after a 15% discount that was applied and without taking advantage of the $900 that Lowe's offered to install it with for a basic simple installation where the homeowner prepares everything ahead of time, this door costs $10,000. That is crazy. It's a door. A door that costs more than a car, but it costs what it costs. If you need to replace an aluminum door in your home and you want a unique style or unique uh, capability, you're going to end up paying that. Now, paying that much money for a door with as many flaws as I'm going to go through is questionable. Coming back to the aluminum header, one of the reasons you need to have this cleaned ahead of time and make sure this isn't uh, damaged or the uh, holes are, are clean and proper and you don't end up with the metal swarf in here is Geldwin's instructions properly say this rail up here where my finger is sliding needs to be very, very clean because if it's not, you're going to end up with, me with metal filings in your wheels. Your wheels are going to go thunk, 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 thunk or they're going to be cut and you're not going to have that smooth, silent rolling action that you need to have. So Geldwin's manufacturers do not do themselves any favors by poor quality control in their factory. Staying with the topic of screws just for a moment to reiterate that they really need some help. Here you have one of your deadbolt pins and this is as it came from the factory fully tightened down. This cannot be torqued anymore without doing any damage you can see your steel protective latch doesn't fasten correctly because they have a poorly prepared or badly specced screw that holds that item down. So it, there are issues with Geldwin and screws. More to come on that topic later. All right. One of the features I like about this door is it replaced what I described as an insecure aluminum door. It was the old style. You could lift it off the rack. It didn't latch down. And in my enclosed porch, my only other security is basically a screen door. So I needed something to have exterior grade security in between this space. And I do believe Geldwin comes through on that topic. What you have is these are actually deadbolt style latches. They slide up and shoot a bolt up into the aluminum header or they shoot a bolt down into the floor and that panel then latches. I'm going to go ahead and latch that now. You have a handle, so you pull that in, latch the door, latch the door, and it latches. You then have a other three-point system. When the door is closed, these pins extend into that groove and it pulls the door tight into the weather seal. Once that's done, and I'm getting you dizzy, you can extend the deadbolt and the door latches very, very securely. So it is a nice, solid, secure door. However, back to other issues. With the instructions, again, they're in error. Because it'll say, don't adjust the door, it's pre-adjusted at the factory, the hinges are set. Don't believe it. The hinges are not set. 
you will have to adjust the door for uh, height um, to make sure the first panel, and that's this panel here, because it goes on where the hinge plate is, is set. So you'll adjust that panel and set it in. Then you hang your second panel, or this panel. The instructions say align the panels and make sure they're leveled across the top. Well, that's a physical impossibility. Here, you can see a discontinuity. It looks minor. Let me see if I can zoom. But it's actually about an eighth of an inch up there. Now, the problem there, besides looking off for a $10,000 door, is that the what if the distance across the top from the panel on the right and the panel to its left isn't the same and even then I'm going to pan down here the gap across the bottom and you should be able to see light through there but it's a little difficult the gap across the bottom for your weather stripping isn't tight and even in my application that's not a huge issue because it's an ADA sill and it's a friction fit with the brush but if you wanted something tighter, that's going to be a problem. You cannot adjust this because these hinges come pre-drilled from the factory in those locations. So you can't just shift it up or down by an eighth of an inch. If it's off, it's off. A $10,000 door shouldn't have that large gap being off. Staying with the screws, coming over to where the damage occurred. Um, this panel is the panel that meets up against the face plate and you have this screw here. You'll see that's an oval head sheet metal screw that sticks up. I don't know why they put an oval head in here when every other screw is flat. As a, felt, as a flat head, either wood screws or machine screws. The technician noticed it was a problem with the oval head sticking up and he tried really, really hard to drive it in. He tried so hard, he stripped the head and put sharp edges on the screw. Those sharp edges and combined with the misadjusted hinges hit this striker plate right here and scratch the door on its first use. So the door, due to poor workmanship, poor material selection, came damaged out of the box. The other issues you see is this is the original striker plate that came with the door. It was installed in July and it's already corroding. It's only November now in an indoor environment. No rain, no issues. That corrosion occurred out of the box with Jeldwin. Now, I've complained with Jeldwin. I've got some customer service from them and they are trying. They're doing it. They're working on it. What you can see, hopefully this will zoom to a appropriate level. It won't. Okay, this is the screw that was stripped from Jeldwin. That's a three inch long oval head machine screw. They had a tough time getting the screw right. They sent me instead these small machine screws. With the damage plate, Jeldwin sent me this one. It came out of the box, stock, corrosion, but it was at least the appropriate size. Jeldwin tried, there you go, the screw fits. Jeldwin tried, inspect a stainless steel one. Stainless steel one looks good, but you can tell a slightly smaller hole. Screw doesn't fit, not without pushing it. Doesn't fit flat, doesn't fit flush. They also had a really difficult time getting the screw. They sent me three of these. They separately had to send the screws because they could not interpret the instructions correctly, I guess. So finally, and this just arrived the other day, they finally sent a proper stainless steel, correctly drilled, undamaged screw. So. The purpose of the video review is to say, yes, it's a nice door. It's an expensive door. With an expensive door, you should have that level of quality control. So, Jeldwin, good job on the customer service, continuing to send me now four striker plates to get it correct, to get it to match. Um, you really need your quality control engineers and your technicians to step up, choose the correct screws, rewrite your instructions, um, drill the holes properly and uh, overall raise your game to provide $10,000 worth of service to somebody getting that door. For buyers, um, the door is nice. Overall, I like it. But if you install it or have it installed, stay on your installers to get it right until you're satisfied with it because that's what you should get. I'm at 15 minutes now. So thank you. Goodbye.